A moment ago I said that there was no damage on this set. Well, I was wrong, unfortunately. It's, uh, it's blackened up in here. I'm not sure exactly what burned out. Um, it might be what's inside this tube. There's what they call a flexible resistor on the schematic, and I think that's what's inside this um, plastic here. I'll have to unsolder one end and take a closer look. Uh, this is the main rectifier tube, and I popped it out, and you can see the base of the tube is actually black. So uh, I, I suspect that one or more sections of the filter capacitor have gone bad and shorted out which caused this whole area to, to burn up. Uh, hopefully the socket's not bad and nothing else is damaged and I just need to replace the caps and maybe this uh, flexible resistor in here and maybe the uh, rectifier tube is shot too. 35W4. Uh, I'm not sure if I have any on hand uh, so I'll, I'll test this and keep my fingers crossed. I did some investigating and I found what caused all this charred uh, soot up here. First off, I tested the tube and it uh, tests really strong, so that's good. Two, I took out that flexible resistor. Inside this tube uh, is, well, is what a flexible resistor looks like. It's supposed to be 18 ohms, this measures about 18.7, so that's fine. As you can see, it's not charred at all. So, that got me thinking, well, what could it be? This microcapacitor looked a little black, but uh, it tests okay. It was just, uh, it was just soot uh, got deposited on the case of it. And then finally I got to this capacitor, which looked okay from this side. But then when I rotated it, the one lead just fell right off. And I could see that this, this capacitor went up in smoke. This is what happens to old capacitors. They're made out of wax and paper and foil, and when they go bad, they tend to go up in smoke. Uh, so, uh, I think I'll just need to replace this, and uh, that should take care of the problem. I'll take a Q-tip and uh, use some uh, alcohol or lacquer thinner and try to clean that up a bit so it doesn't look quite so bad. And I've just about got this electrolytic freed up. It's got uh, one more of these twist leads to uh, unsolder. And pop that guy out and start rebuilding it. I'm just about done recapping the radio. I thought it would only take me one or two days. It's actually been about a week. Uh, it's surprising how many caps they can cram into this little radio. Here are most of them here. All the old ones I've pulled out. Uh, what I've got left is the electrolytics. I pulled the can out so I could finally see the values clearly and it's three sections of 75 microfarads at 150 working volts and 200 peak volts and a 30 microfarad at 25 volt 40 peak. Well 75 is kind of an oddball value. The closest standard would be 82 and uh, maybe even above that go to 100 should be okay but I don't have any of those on hand with high enough voltage, so the best I could find was 68 at 250. The voltage is fine, but the capacitance is a little bit low, so I'm just going to tack these three in temporarily, so I can try powering this radio up, and I've got the proper capacitors ordered up, and I'll use a 33 for the 30, which is just fine. And uh, one more paper cap to go. It's a .005, and unfortunately I've run out of these. So I am going to use a .004, which should be close enough for trying this out. And then I'm going to patch together this section. There should be a couple power resistors in there that I removed for testing. These two jobbers. And that 18 ohm flexible resistor I have to reinstall. I spent some time with uh, some mineral spirits and denatured alcohol and Q-tips and cleaned up this whole burned out area here from that capacitor that went up in smoke. It turns out the capacitor that smoked is directly from the AC line to ground. 
and you're really supposed to use a safety cap there. What they had used was just a 250 volt DC cap, which is not at all uh, up to code. So I have taken a safety cap here and put it in its place. And uh, yeah, I just have to do this one corner here and I think we can try this radio out. All right, I finished wiring in the electrolytics. It's a little bit ugly, but electrically it's sound. And remember, this is just temporary, just to try to power this set up. I would never leave a radio wired like this, put it back in the cabinet like this, because this is not very secure, not safe at all. All right, so the AC power on this radio comes in through these two prongs, which normally would be connected to the integral plug on the back of the set but I have not repaired this antenna yet and it's got all these bits of copper that are loose and I don't want this to short anything out so I'm going to leave the back off and my first thought was these look very similar to a cheater cord or an AC plug like you'd use on a TV set so I thought I'd use a cheater cord but they're spaced a little bit too wide apart this just won't fit on I don't want to force it because I don't want to crack this uh, connector here so what I want to do is simply take a, uh, a lamp cord and strip the two ends and uh, tack it in and this is a hot chassis set so I will be running it through um, an isolation transformer and then into a variac and I'm going to slowly power this set up while monitoring the uh, voltage all right I am ready to power this radio up for the first time I have wired in an AC cord here. I have a meter hooked up to the main rectifier output. That's pin 7 right here. I've got it wired into an isolation transformer that I variac. So as soon as I turn that variac high enough to where the tubes start conducting, I should start to measure a DC voltage on that uh, rectifier tube. This Variac came with a 5 amp fuse. I've uh, replaced it with a 1 amp fuse. Was when I work on radios like this, they don't draw that much current, and since there is no fuse on this radio, that should offer some protection if there is uh, something wrong. All right, the Variac all the way down. So here goes. Nothing bad so far. To turn this up, if this needle starts going up, that means there's no dead short anymore. So that's good. Up to about 35 volts AC. Not really enough for the tubes to start conducting yet. So let's keep going. Fifty percent now. It should be enough to start getting something. I think. Well, maybe not. I don't see the tubes glowing. Well, I'll try a little bit more. Well, now we're getting some up to about seventy volts AC. Yeah, yeah, I can tell the tubes are glowing now. A little bit more. Don't smell any smoke, nothing's <laughs> overheating, the voltage continues to rise. some life out of the speaker. See if it responds to the volume control. Alright. Oh, there's a hum and it definitely gets louder. I turn the control. Control sounds very dirty. Not surprising since I haven't cleaned it yet. 
Alright, everything seems to be okay, so I'm going to put this AC up to about the normal operating voltage. About there. Should think we'll be around about 110 volts DC or so. Okay, now, <laughs> so we get something besides a hum out of this. So like I said, I've got this in AM mode. No antenna hooked up at all. Other than just the wires that are hanging out. So I'll try tuning it. I've not tested any of these tubes other than the, the, uh, the main rectifier tube, so uh, there's still certainly be some bad tubes in there. Also, be some bad uh, connections in the tube sockets. Well, it could just be that I don't have the antenna hooked up. Let's try a from uh, for the heck of it. Hey, heard something. Oh. Yeah, considering I have no antennas, uh, no antenna, and the uh, trolls haven't been cleaned yet. Things only get better from here now that I know it's got some life left in it. Oh, I'm going to dig out an antenna and hook it up. As I said in an earlier video, uh, a simple antenna to use for these uh, for an AM receiver is a TV antenna, and I got plenty of those lying around. Interesting read on this was how, how the internal antenna works. It's actually a uh, if you, depending on how you connect up these, these terminals for the antenna, uh, you can use the AC power cord as an actual FM antenna. I guess the two leads form an FM uh, dipole antenna. And they use a capacitor to let the RF go through. It's this little uh, 47 picofarad cap here. I guess that blocks the <laughs> 120 volts of AC from getting into there. And it goes up and around and goes into the FM antenna lead. Well, I don't want to mess with that, so uh, I'm going to actually hook up a, an FM antenna to those two uh, spade terminals. I've got to trace this out to figure which the right two are. I think this is one of them. i got to figure out which the other one is. 